A uniform horizontal beam pivoted at its right hand end is in equilibrium. It's pivoted over here. The weight of the beam is acting on the center of its mass and it's being balanced by the 60 Newton force, which is 50 Newtons away. Okay, so what is the weight of this beam if this is balanced? So, well, it's pretty easy that the force being generated, the clockwise force being generated over here, the force here is causing a moment that's clockwise. Let's call this M1, which is clockwise. And this weight is M2. I'm just numbering it because I feel like it. It's counterclockwise. These both forces are balanced out. So it's M1 equals to M2. M1 is 460 times the distance, which is 50 times the weight, which is W, and the distance is 30. So struggling with space. And quickly we'll find out that W, the weight, is equal to 100 Newtons. So our answer is D. Four table lamps are shown along the position M is the center of mass for each of these. Which lamp is the most stable one? Well, you want a high surface area at the bottom or a high bottom area and the mass to be lower. So it's the lowest over here and it's also the widest. So it's pretty easy for this one. And the answer is A over here. A vertical force is applied at the point X to balance this plank. So what's happening with this plank is at the pivot, two meters away to the right, there's an eight Newton force and uh, to the left of it, there's a 12 Newton force. And they're putting a force over here that is upwards. No, actually, I don't know. But it makes sense it is upwards because without this force, it's going to fall towards the left because even if we don't know the moment, the distance is the same and the force is greater over here. So it's definitely upwards. Now we have to figure out if it's going to be a four Newton or a two Newton. My guess is it's going to be a two Newton force. So instead of numbering, let's just list down the moments generated by each force. So moment, uh, let's call it moment X, moment one, moment two. This is going to be a clockwise moment. It's going to be a counter, uh, yeah, it's counterclockwise. Counterclockwise, this is going to be a clockwise moment. So what's my equation? Well, it's going to be M1 plus M2, sorry, it's going to be MX, like the sound of MX mx plus m2 because they're both in the same direction should be balanced off by they're fighting m1 which is counterclockwise mx we don't know the force x let's call it fx which is a distance four meters and that's being aided by m2 which is eight times two all of that is being balanced off by 12 Newton force, which is two meters away. You know, for my ease of mind, I'll divide this entire equation by two before I continue. It's going to be two fx plus eight equals to 12. Well, the difference is four over two is fx. So it's definitely, the answer is definitely upwards of two. The answer is B. So again, we have to find out the distance, how far this needs to be for this entire system to be balanced. So again, we can do the same thing. It is the force or the moment M1 
M2, M3, right? I'm listing down the moments being generated over here. And this is a counterclockwise moment. This is a clockwise. This is clockwise as well. So this is all being balanced out like, um, like this. It's M1 is equal to M2 plus M M3, right? Let's give ourselves some room. Yeah, let's keep it like that. All right, M1 is the force, the force 300 times the distance, which is 0 0.4 meter away. M2 is 350, the force is 350 times D. That is the distance, we don't know the distance. Uh, M3 is the 100 Newton force times 0 0.5. Now we have to do is solve for D. You shall see that D comes out to be 0 0.2 meters. The correct answer is C. A diver of weight 500 Newton stands at the end. So he has a weight of 500 newtons and is generating a moment, let's call it M1, which is going to be clockwise, because he's two meters away from the point P. The springboard has a weight. The springboard that he's standing on also has a similar weight of 500 newtons and is acting towards the center, so it's acting one meter away from the pivot. And that's the geometric center of this board. So what equation can we form? Well, the total moment, I don't have to balance it out, I just need to know what the total moment is. Well, for one thing, it's going to be clockwise, not that anyone asked, is going to be these two forces, or these actually these two moments combined. And this is M2, of course. Uh, M1 is 500 times two, and that's 500 times one. That's the same as 500 times 3, which is cool. If you can figure this part out, just solve the top part and you'll get 1500 Newton meter. That's the unit for moment. Our answer is D. I really like this question. The diagram shows a muscle and bones in a person's arm. The hand holds a load of 40 newtons, we can see that. So the pivot is over here, and this is essentially a lever where it's being held up by the force of this muscle, right? The elbow acts as a pivot and the tension in the muscle keeps the uh, part of the arm horizontal. So he, this is how he's holding it, right? Now, essentially what's going on is, this is your pivot over here. This blue part is your pivot and your arm is going to move about it, right? Or your hand to your elbow, right? There's a downward Newton force of 400 that's generating a moment because there's some distance of, you know, 0.35 meters. And the counter force that's generating a counter moment is this force, which is towards the top. So if I try to figure out what force F is, it's going to be, well, this is causing a moment of M1, let's say, which is counterclockwise, that makes sense, because this force over here is going to move it counterclockwise, and this is going to move it clockwise. So let's highlight the other one, that's going to be M2 which is clockwise. So let's do the math right here because we don't have too much room. Uh, M1, if it's balanced, matches M2. The two moments are being balanced out, right? What is M1? Well, it is the force generated by the muscle, F, or the tension by the muscle, times 0 
five, that's five centimeter, into meter. This is equal to 40 newtons multiplied by the distance, which is 35 centimeter, 0 0.35 meters, right? So let's solve for F. F will come out to 280 newtons, right? We can see the options here. So let's do that. And we can see this part as well. All right, so we can see the distance earlier. It's 35 centimeter, and the correct answer is 30. Yep. Two objects, X and Y, are suspended from a uniform rod pivoted at the center. The rod, of course, is in equilibrium. What is the statement about X and Y that is correct? This is pivot over here, and they're balanced out. The ma okay, essentially balance out the masses. So let's say the mass is, or the force of X, the mass is gonna be proportional to the force, so we can ignore it, uh, and just talk about the force. Let's say this is force. So between the two, yeah, there's no way about it. So let's say this is force F. So we got to figure out in terms of F, what is this going to be, right? So actually let's, it's better to call it X. The force value is X and this is F Y. So there are not too many Fs in the equation when we're doing it. So essentially there are two moments, one for X and one for Fy. That's going to be the force X times the distance 0 0.1, because that's the distance 10 centimeter into meters. And this is being balanced out by Fy, which is 0 0.25 away. So if I make Fy the subject, I realize that that is essentially hmm, x over 2.5. Now, x over 2.5, what is that? That is roughly 0 0.4x. So the force Fy is 0.4 times x, it's less. Uh, in other words, it's 40% of whatever this force is, x. Uh, is x, the mass x is 0.4 times the mass of y. It's the other way around. The mass x is 2.5 times the mass of y, yes. That is true. How do I know it's 2.5? I can double back before this line over here, and I can rearrange this. Well, x, if I make this the subject, is 2.5 times of Fy. It is indeed 2.5 times the mass of y. They're talking about masses again. The forces will be proportional. So it's essentially the same thing. B is our answer. Uh, the 2.1 figure shows a bed that falls away against the wall during the day. When horizontal, the bed is supported on the side by the hinge. It's just a classic pivot. The weight W on the bed acts through the center, which is at the horizontal distance, 0 0.5 uh, meters away. Okay. Calculate, well, calculate the weight of the bed if the mass of the bed is 26 kilograms and the gravitational field strength is this much, which is 10, right? That's pretty easy. That is weight is equals to 
mass times gravitational acceleration, mass is 26 kilograms times 10, 260. What are the units? Newtons. You don't put the units in, you won't get the mark for it. Now moving on, let's bring this lower. All right, state the principles of moments. The principle of moments is when a body is in equilibrium, the total clockwise moment equals the total what? Counterclockwise moment. So let's quickly draw a free body diagram where the downward force was W, the weight, which was 260 newtons. And the upward force is something we have to calculate. And uh, this is 0 0.35 meters away. And this is 0 0.3 meters away. And this point, it should be very easy. So let's just put it in the formula. <clears throat> so moment counterclockwise is equal to moment clockwise. Counterclockwise moments is the force F that you're lifting it with times 0 0.3 plus 0 0.37, that's 0 0.75. All of this is equal to the weight of the bed, 260 times the distance, which is 0 0.3. The final answer for me comes out to be 121.3 newtons. The figure shows the brake pedal of a car which is connected to a brake cylinder. So this diagram looks pretty complicated. Essentially what's happening is you have a lever which is pivoted over here, right over here. There's a force being acted on it of 80 Newtons, like that, that's 80. And another force over here. So essentially what you have to do is figure this force out I'm not read, writing the distance down, but it's pretty self-explanatory. So this complicated little equation is just this, you know, uh, diagram redone, and it's pretty easy, right? So yeah, let's figure it out. Now what, what might be confusing is, well, this is 80 Newton force, it's in the same direction. So to balance it out, shouldn't this be in the other direction or you know people might be confused that the direction is other words so this is the force acting on the piston so this piston is probably acting pushing this part of the brake with the same force backwards because forces will cause an equal reactionary force right so essentially what's happening is over here there's resistance there's push actually in the other direction over here like that, right? It's in the other direction. Phew, what do? How do we do this? Well, it's just a simple question from here, actually. Okay. So first, let's calculate it. The force is 80 Newton. So let's go with, again, the moment caused by the 80 Newton force is equal to, it's not caused by the 80 Newton force, but the reaction force generated. Actually, let's go with the force generated by F and the reaction to that moment being generated at that piston or the force being generated. Well, this force was um, unknown and it was 0 0.22 meters away because it's 18 plus four is 22 and meters would be 0.22. And this is generating a force of 80 Newton, which is uh, four centimeter away, which is 0. 0.2. 04. Let's solve for F. 
this comes out to 14.5 newtons, right? So, and it makes sense because you're putting a small amount of uh, effort by uh, pushing down on the pedal, but the result is that it gets, the effort is multiplied. So it's designed that way. That's pretty cool. All right, let's move on to defining the term moment. The moment is the turning effect of a force. of a force and the formula essentially that's what they're asking is uh, force applied multiplied by the perpendicular distance which is important for ND distance from the pivot. 